One of the last refuges of the honest theist, as I would call them, would be to point out that there are very obvious limits to the sort of knowledge, the sort of understanding that can be achieved through science. They would be completely right in pointing this out, and I'm certainly not going to argue against that. It is very, very true that science, for example, can tell us how old the universe is, approximately anyway, and that the answer that we've got, gotten so far is at least in the correct ballpark, if not accurate. We can also say with pretty much certainty that this planet here, that we, that we live on, planet Earth, is you know, around 5 billion years old, and that there has been life on this planet for at least 4 of those 5 billion years. We can say with certainty, we can state as a fact, that life has been evolving on this planet, that 4 billion years ago, life was very different to the way it is now, and that it has been evolving from what it was like then to what it is like now. We have very successful scientific theories supporting those facts, theories that explain why the solar system is the way it is, Th theories that explain how life would have evolved over those four billion years. Those are very successful. But, as the honest theist would point out, this is not a YouTube user, I'm just say, talking about honest theists, right? As the honest theist would point out, such scientific knowledge can never answer questions such as why is there life? Why are we on this planet? Why are we here? Why is it wrong to do this thing? from a moral perspective, and why is it right to do that thing from a moral perspective? Such questions cannot be answered by science. But it would be very wrong to, to use the Stephen Jay Gould NOMA approach, non-overlapping magisteria, and kind of, as a scientist, pull away from such areas altogether. And it would also be very, very wrong for those who are involved in things like philosophy or religion or whatnot, to ignore the findings of science. And again, I'm going to explain why it is the case by simply giving you an example. For example, one of those questions that philosophers have been grappling with is the question, why are we here on this planet? Why do we humans exist? That might of course sound like a very valid question to ask. However, science has now given us a huge amount of insight as to how, not why, how life came about to be on this planet, how it got to the state it is now. We've got theories about abiogenesis that are being developed at the moment. We have a very successful theory about evolution and those two things explain, or are in the process of explaining, how we came to be here. What is abundantly clear at this stage already, no matter how sketchy your theories are, is that the whole process by which we came to be where we are now on this planet, life, humanity, and so on and so forth, is the result of a process that evolves, that involves evolution, and so on and so forth. Knowing that, we can now see that there cannot have been a creator literally involved in the creation of humanity who would have created humanity for a reason, out of some sort of a motivation. That simply isn't the case. All the evidence points to the contrary. And whilst, whilst science is never going to be able to ask, to answer the question, why is there life on this planet? Why is humanity the way it is? It has answered the question, how? And by doing so, it has pointed out 
quite clearly that asking the question why, in this particular case at least, is an invalid question. There is no creator. There is no motivation behind humanity as we find it today. And as a result, the, the question is asking why of something that doesn't exist. It therefore is not a valid question. In that regard, science can lift the blanket, can lift the cover over something that has eluded people like philosophers and theologians for centuries, simply because it comes in left of field and discovered that there's nothing there in the first place. And that is very valid indeed.